What's up, everybody? Um, I've been meaning to do a Q and A for a while, but not many people ask me questions. <laughs> <laughs> but these are the questions that uh, some of them my girlfriend made up. Some of them I've seen people ask me before in the past, either on my YouTube comments, either in my Instagram or on my Facebook. So we're gonna address some of them now. She's gonna read them out. I'll put them in the bottom right hand corner so you can read them in case you can't understand her Russian accent. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, let's get started. Well, first question, what got you into bodybuilding? What got me into bodybuilding? Um, I always was sporty. I always played rugby and football. I played quite high standard actually. Uh, but then I broke my leg um, and then I ripped my cruciate ligament so I couldn't really do a lot of sport for a long time. Um, and I also got kicked out of like a really good Gloucester Academy for being too small, which is kind of ironic considering what I do now. So from there, I, I didn't, re didn't really have any sport to do other than go to the gym. So I started going to the gym and then it just developed from there. Some of my friends convinced me to do a show and I did pretty, pretty well. So it just blossomed into what it is now and I've just kept building every single year. And here we are. As we all know, you follow an if it fits your macros approach to dieting. So, is it true if you follow if it fits your macros, you can eat a donut or treat every day and still look good and lose weight? Yes, but I wouldn't recommend it. Because at the end of the day, a carb of sugar, uh, one carb is the same wherever you get it from. So, if you get a one carb from sugar, if you get one carb from a whole grain, it is essentially just a carb, and it will work. You know, there's lots of people online that do if it fits your macros and have donuts every single day. Is it good for you to have a donut every single day? Common sense, no it's not. Um, so I also follow the rule, you are what you eat. So I like to stick to very healthy foods. And then I will treat myself if I need it, if I'm desperate for it and my body's telling me I need it, then I won't be afraid to have a little snack here and there. What would be your opinion on carbs versus fats? Carbs versus fats is a very interesting one. Um, Lots of people have high carb diets. I personally have a high fat diet. The reason for that, I feel like my body, and through some research, I can't really quote you right now because I haven't got it on top of my head, but human body is more adapted to kind of using fats as, a, as, a, as an energy source. So if you're constantly having high, kind of high carb diets, like you will feel good and you will be feel full and you'll get a great pump and stuff, but is it the best for you? I personally think it isn't because you can become carb insensitive so you don't react as well to carbs so when it comes to kind of carb loading and carb depleting you don't react as well um, you can also just become very like intolerant to carbs so when you become intolerant you just react very badly and um, you can end up putting on a lot of weight later on in life so I'm all about longevity preserving my body and making it as healthy as possible inside and out so I feel like having a slightly lower carb diet, don't be afraid of carbs by all means, but having a slightly lower carb diet has really benefited me in the long run, especially in my gut, I don't get too bloated. Is, is white rice bad for you? No, it's not. Do you use any supplements? And if so, which ones do you recommend? So this is a funny gray area. Uh, I actually haven't used supplements since about February 2015, so eight months ago. Um, but if I was to recommend any supplements, I would say if you're not eating enough protein, because you can get everything from a diet, every single thing in the, that comes with the supplement you can get from the diet, and I strongly believe you should get it from the diet, but if you physically can't eat enough protein because, I don't know, maybe you work too much or you can't afford it or anything like that, a protein shake, a whey protein shake could be you know, beneficial after a workout. Um, if you're not eating enough fish, then fish oils. If you don't eat any veg and you really, really can't eat veg, then I guess a multivitamin as well. But I eat a lot of veg. I try to put fish into my diet. So that's pretty much it. Um, I probably... I'm going to trial run BCAs and glutamine again, so I can't really offer a proper opinion on glutamine and BCAs, but I will update you when I get through it. Is whey protein necessary to build muscle? No, it's not. What's your opinion on LIS cardio versus HIIT cardio? I personally prefer LIS because I can't handle high intensity stuff. I just get gas out and uh, just burns me so much. 
but I think it it is very it is a very good uh, tool to use for weight loss but really it is down to your own opinion if you prefer to do hit do hit if you prefer to do less then do less are you a crunchy or a smooth peanut butter fan <laughs> smooth peanut butter whole earth smooth peanut butter is my favorite but I, I am I will eat I will eat crunchy so what's your favorite body part to train legs all day every day um, always admire people's legs you know, Kai Green's legs, just insane, big motivation. You know, anyone, you know, Matt Ogus, his squatting is just unbelievable. Um, so definitely legs, because it is the hardest and it really shows who wants it more in the, the day. How many times a week do I need to train uh, to get a six pack? Um, this is another funny area. Essentially, everyone has a six pack already, but it's just either covered with fat well, yeah, it's just covered with fat. So you can develop the abs more and you can work the abs more and you can sculpt essentially a little bit more by working them. I personally do mine probably about three times a week um, just because I ha actually have some imbalances in my abs so I kind of try to correct those. But you use your core throughout lots and lots of exercises and I know many people who don't train abs at all and they have a perfect six pack so it is down to the diet at the end of the day. And what is your training split like at the moment? At the moment I'm in the middle of kind of transitioning but I am looking to do chest twice a week, shoulders twice a week and probably legs twice a week. So I will be having double training days but with my surplus of calories that should be absolutely fine. Um, so no real split just yet but I will be updating you guys when I get a proper split. Do you have rest days and if so how do you eat on those days? Uh, rest days is another great area for me because I hate rest days, I can't stand sitting still so I'd probably do something active, either some cardio or you know like a core circuit so I'd never have a real rest day but re real rest days they are beneficial especially if you're struggling to put on weight add in a complete rest day but keep your calories the same uh, and you'll find that you'll add weight but if you're in a deficit and you're trying to lose weight and you have a rest day I would suggest maybe slightly lowering the carbs, but, uh, the carbs the calories because you're not actually working out as much so you don't need as many for that day. And um, are you natural? Uh, I'm natty bruh. Yeah, unfortunately I am all natural. Don't get me wrong, thought about it, everyone has. But as for now, I am 100% natural. Who are your biggest fitness inspirations? Um, already mentioned Matt Ogus. He was the first YouTuber that I kind of watched. and he, he, he's, he's pretty pretty much the guy I learned everything off. Uh, I admire Christian Guzman, but in terms of physique, um, I love Sadik, I love Jeremy Buendia, I love many, many people's physiques, so, but the original gangster, Matt Ogus. Okay, and what's your favourite car, or dream car? Mm. We had this conversation actually, um, either an Aston Martin DBRS9, or Straight up a gay bay run. Why not? How do you implement cheat meals into a cut diet? Uh, cheat meals? You don't need cheat meals, guys. People always say you need cheat meals for leptin levels and stuff. And I understand that and I really get that. But you can do that with a refeed with very, very healthy foods. A cheat meal is more psychological. And I do use them because I am a very, I'm a psychological warrior. Everything is a psychological game for me. I get moody. I get stressed. My girlfriend will tell you that. <laughs> um... <laughs> But for me, it keeps the cheats away, it keeps those little pickings away, if I, it keeps that extra scoop of peanut butter away, it keeps that extra rice cake away, because I know that I have that one day at the end of the week, either a Friday, Saturday, normally a Friday, because I go to five guys, as you guys know. Um, and I know that that day, I get to eat what I want, so it's a psychological game. And, uh. and you should do them when you feel like doing them. So I wouldn't say every week for everybody, I unfortunately am... Um, I wouldn't say blessed, but I have a very good metabolism. I can digest carbs very well, so I can afford to have them once a week. But I would suggest, see how you get on with once a week, but if you're not losing weight, then definitely make it 10 days, 12 days, kind of how you feel. You'll feel it when your workouts suffer, you get tired, fatigued, and you're just generally like, your libido can go down, um, all these kind of different signs for that you need a refeed and you need that boost, you need the replenishment of uh, glycogen and um, fats into your body. What is your favorite cheat meal? Oh, 
Five Guys. You guys seen it? Five Guys. I absolutely love his burgers. Uh, I also am partial to a cheesecake. How did you meet your girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> we first met, or I first like saw her at Body Power 2014. Um, we weren't. We didn't kind of speak to each other too much, we had about a five minute conversation and nothing really, nothing was really gonna happen and then it was like a couple months later. Well I actually saw you on stage at your oh, first, yeah, one she, of your she, first competitions. Yeah, my, my first, was it my first one? Second one. Second competition, she saw me on stage, I just found her on Instagram a couple months later, she, or she found me, I think she probably found me. <laughs> and then we just liked each other's photos, direct message and that's how it goes and here we are today, a year later, we just had our anniversary. because. On Halloween. On Halloween. Yeah. So, there we go. Do you ever have any setbacks? And if so, how do you jump back on track? I... But people always have setbacks, you know. Sometimes if it just gets too much to you and people just go at it, I would say jump straight back on the exact same program. Don't think, fuck, I ate too much food today and I'm gonna cut my calories the next day and I'm gonna do a shitload of cardio. Because what is done is done. The damage is already done for that day. So get straight back on the program and just keep consistent the whole time, day in, day out. Because as soon as you stop that consistency, that's when you fall off the wagon. When you reverse diet, how often do you increase your calories and by how much? Reverse dieting is a very interesting topic. For those of you that don't know what reverse dieting is, it's when you've been in the calorie deficit for so long, doing lots of cardio, restricting your car your calories to try lose weight. If you suddenly take out all of those car. Uh, all of that cardio and add in a load of calories, you will just get fat and, and I'm one to show for that because I am, I've put on a lot, I've put on about six kilos since the show weight because I haven't done any cardio, but I will be getting back on it. So a reverse diet is when you slowly reintroduce the calories. You don't just go absolutely mental for two weeks or three weeks or four weeks, however it is, or just indefinitely. You slowly introduce calories. I would recommend get back up to maintenance first of all, stay at maintenance for seven to 10 days, which is what I'm currently doing now and then just work up from there each week, 100 calories, 200 calories, whatever you feel like you can do. If you're putting on too much fat, rein in those calorie, that calorie increase each week. If you're not putting on any weight, you can afford to put it a bit higher. How does your training differ from when you're cutting versus when you're bulking? I would say when I'm cutting, I do a lot more reps. Um, I don't worry about the weight as much. I don't worry about progression as much because I'm probably not going to build too much muscle. I still honestly believe that you can build muscle in a deficit because I feel like I've done that over the past kind of 16 weeks. Um, but yeah, higher intensity, less rest, more drop sets, supersets, just trying to keep the heart rate up, trying to burn more calories compared to maybe more strength training concentrating on pushing that weight progression each each week up. Uh, what are some macro friendly condiments and seasonings that you would recommend for people who are dieting? This is the tough one guys. At the end of the day, this dieting is all down to seasoning and I always tell all my clients this. So I use teriyaki seasoning, I use jerk seasoning, peri peri seasoning, all the kind of the powdery ones. Okay, it's got a bit of sodium in it but if you're using that every single day, your body just ends up in equilibrium and it'll get used to the sodium that you have every single day. Um, it's more personal preference, I also use chaluda sauce, very low calorie. Um, I do dabble with a bit of soy sauce, there's probably, per gram there's like a calorie, so I use like 20 grams, but like that's all you need for a, for a good dish. Um, they're my favourites, but there are more. And our last question is, what are your future competition plans and what are you planning to do for, uh, in 2016? Well, 2015 was such a big year, um, my most successful year ever. Um, it's going to be hard to talk, but I, I am ready and I'm motivated and the fire is in my, in my belly. So I'm going to compete in the Arnolds in Madrid. I'm going to see if I can afford to go to Ohio to compete in the Arnolds, but um, I can't. it's going to be an expensive flight, an expensive trip, but we'll see. But I qualify for both of those. I've also qualified for the Amateur Olympia next year. Um, I've also qualified for the British Finals next year at UKBFF, so I'm going to compete in all of those, and I'm going to try and get a pro card, guys. You know, why not? Like, I, I feel like I can compete with the big boys now after that Amateur Olympia result. I could not believe what happened, but... I realise it's not all about size, it's all about proportion, symmetry, how you come in condition wise and it's given me a lot of confidence so I'm coming for the titles <laughs> and I've got to do what i got to do.
So um, that's it for all the questions. So if you've got any more questions, comment below. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one.